to be praised. Thank, Thank you once again for joining us tonight here at Covenant Fusion Church. It's always a blessing to be in the house of the Lord. So glad that you can join us. If you have any prayer requests, please send them to 407-490-4019. Again, the number is 407-490-4019. We'd love to pray for you. The word said there's power in prayer. And we're two or more gathered in his name. He is in the midst of us. So believe there is power in prayer. Amen. And we are going to declare Psalm 91. So if you can go to Psalm 91, we can declare that together. And there's power in his word. So let's declare this with boldness. Let's begin. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say to the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God, in him I will trust. And surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the power and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste in the day. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. And in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And now let's welcome Pastor Stream. Be blessed with this Bible study. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. Amen? Amen. Amen. We serve a wonderful God. Amen. Who doesn't mind being good to us? <laughs> That's something I like about Him. Even though I might be messing up so many times, He doesn't mind being good to me. Amen. So I'm thankful that we serve a God that is always faithful and always loving toward us. Yeah. You know, I have come across a statement today that uh, was made by um, C.S. Lewis. I believe is a very powerful statement for me, it seemed like, so I just want to share it with you. He said this, uh, humility does not, does, not mean, um, does not mean thinking low of yourself, but thinking less of yourself. I, I thought that was very, very apt, you know. Yeah. Humility, we always try to, in the process of trying to be humble, we try to lower, lower us. We always try to see us low and all those kinds of things. That's not true, true humility. The true humility is when you think less of you. Because if you are thinking less of you, that means you are thinking more of God. Amen. 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 That is, that is the best uh, thing we can come across. So we are going through our Bible study um, in the Hebrews. Um, I mean, like, you know, it's, it's a, it, it, Hebrews deals with real life things. You know, I think that's one of the things that I like about Bible. Bible doesn't uh, uh, deal with superficial things. It deals with the real life things. One time I, I, I was studying uh, the book of Revelation. When I was studying the book of Revelation, I was like, I need to in figure this out. What is this, this uh, war? What is the dragon that is doing here? What is the snake? What is all of this? What are all these things? I just want to figure this out. <coughs> even though to a point I, I was able to um, comprehend it well, um, but the Lord gives me an instruction um, how does it help you today? Because we are so fascinated about uh, 
a supernatural or a superficial uh, manifestation, but God is more interested in our day-to-day -day life. Amen. Any word that is coming to us is more for our edification. You need edification today, not tomorrow. Amen? Amen. You need to be in a place where you need to be lifted up today because we are going through some things today, not yesterday, not Amen. tomorrow. So um, that's, the, that's why uh, faith becomes so important for a Christian because faith is to live today. You don't need faith for your tomorrow. Because even, even, that's why Jesus gives us that instruction. Um, tomorrow has its own worries. Amen. Don't worry about your tomorrow because tomorrow has its own worries. Mm -hmm. you know, what we do as human beings is we just want to figure out everything today. We just want everything solved, everything straightened out, everything today. And as a matter of fact, there is also a possibility tomorrow may never happen. That's right. That's true. If tonight is the night Jesus shows up, we're hey. done. We're out. Glory. Amen. Amen. So that, that, that should um, give us uh, an opportunity and a, a, and a reality check that we may be wasting our time thinking too much about tomorrow. And then another biggest problem that we do as uh, human beings is we are always trying to relive our past or correct our past. Yeah. We're always living in that, and the, the devil has a lot of fun in it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if, if he can make you sit in your past, he will have a lot of fun in it. Right. Because in your past, mostly what you have is guilt True. Mm -hmm. and condemnation. Because most of the times you look back and I'm like, okay, I, I wish I had known this better. I wish I did, you know, uh, uh, a young mother who may have been ditched by a man, well, I wish I had known about this guy before. I wouldn't have committed to this. Yeah, or or, or uh, uh, financially, many times, like I wish I had known this thing, otherwise I wouldn't have put my money in this. Uh -huh. uh, that, but, but the truth is, you can never change it. But you can live in resentment, you can live in guilt, you can live in condemnation. None of them are worth your life. You need to live your today. Amen. Amen. Your today, for your today, the most important ingredient that you need for you to live your today is faith. Faith is the most important thing. That's true. That's why Bible talks about now faith, not yesterday's faith, not tomorrow's faith. Now faith. And then Bible again and again reminds us, this is the day that the Lord hath made, and let us be glad and rejoice in this day because this is the day. Not right. yesterday. Right, right. When is your best shot? Today. today. Mm -hmm. So that's why my, my, my plan and every time when I look at faith, faith is about living today. Who knows, tonight might be your last night. Mm -hmm. hey. Who knows? I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not trying to scare nobody here. Okay. That's not what I'm trying to do. But you know, we are too worried and too caught up in things that you don't even have control of. Exactly. You have today. Are you able to eat? Are you able to sleep? Enjoy. God has given so much for us. That's what we have to focus on. Hebrews, um, let's go to Hebrews chapter 5, starting at verse 10. We stopped it as, last time uh, there. So I just want to start back uh, so we can um, uh, tie it up. So Hebrews chapter 5, verse 10 reads like this. Uh, called by God as high priest, talking about Jesus, according to the order of Melchizedek, we studied that, of whom we, mu mu we have much to say and hard to explain, since you have become dull of hearing. <clears throat> this hearing here is not just about hearing in your ears. Because... Um, you know, everybody we grow, we grow uh, uh, as we are growing. Oh, one of the ways that we measure people's I I everything, we live in a world, everything has to be quantified. Success is quantified. Failure is quantified. Everything is quantified. Many times we have struggle because what somebody is trying to quantify me with, 
I may not measure for it. See, that's one of the reasons you see people that may have failed in their school, yet they succeed in a business. Okay. The, the qualification that they received or the measuring stick that they received didn't stop them from succeeding. Mm -hmm. But we live in a world, everything is quantified. Everything is measured. And that's why sometimes even at work, sometimes we get, <clears throat> I don't know too many times, I would get a little frustrated because all the work that I am doing is not according to their quantification. They're looking for you clocking in and clocking out. Mm. But for you, you put a lot of effort in all the other times still pertaining to work. Mm -hmm. You know, if you are working 40 days, let me tell you something, your mind definitely will work minimum to minimum 60 hours okay. in a week for that same job. Because you go into the job with a prepared mind. So you're putting, uh, so where are my 20 more hours paycheck? But that doesn't fit their quantification. That doesn't fit their measuring stick. You didn't put anything on pen and paper. I could care less how much more time you spend on your thinking. <laughs> right? right? So um, the, 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 the thing we have to, uh, even though the measuring sticks sometimes <coughs> Or, uh, uh, or uh, sometimes we have, uh, Bible talks about as uh, unrighteous scale, which again talks about a measuring stick. Uh, sometimes you grant yourself something that you don't even deserve. We, we, we think we deserve this, we deserve that, we deserve that. I mean, where did you get that from? Say right, right now, so for example, the uh, society that we are living in right now, uh, this uh, student loan forgiveness thing is going on. Most of the kids that have had accrued the student loan, they want somebody to pay for that, their student loan. Exactly. Somebody to pay for that. On one group says, you know what, I, I gave up on all those dreams and I just picked myself and paid my debt and, and paid for my school and put myself to school. How is this? Justify right. that you're taking my money that I am paying as tax dollars and you're trying to pay someone else's. Mm -hmm. How is that justification? Yeah. Exactly. The measuring stick that you look at those kinds of things, when you look at it, though, when you look at both sides of the picture, the one who is receiving the benefit of the forgiveness of their loan, they are happy. And then they try to tell you, you should be happy for me. Oh. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Right. That's easy. So, so uh, um, this, is, this is sometimes what, what I, why I'm going after it is like we try to declare a judgment after us and we want everybody to comply with it. <laughs> yeah. Even though you may have never been qualified for it. So um, the same way in, in, in life is about aging or growing. Growth. Growth is oftentimes quantified, and it is quantified in many ways. How we measure growth is by by the number of days you grew, you lived. Is that the true measuring stick? Yeah. If you if, if you are 68 years or old, you'll be able to draw social security. That doesn't mean you have matured. <laughs> Come on now. Are you with me here? Yes. yes. <laughs> no, but the government grants you the social security check because you are 68. And the government doesn't grant you, you paid for it anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, exactly. uh, which they have run, ran it down and used it for, you know, you, I, I, don't get me no, started yeah, on it. No, I, 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 I don't want to start on that. Let me just, let, let me just move on. Keep going. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but who, uh, what is the measuring stick that we use for maturity? That's what this particular area deals with. 
I want to give you mature stuff, mature content. <clears throat> but you don't have what it takes. As a matter of fact, you should have had it. But the, but the words that is used, since you have become dull of hearing. You once were sharp. Now you became dull. It kind of reminds me of some of the blades that we use. When we first buy them, they are super sharp. Now they became dull. Why did they become dull? You never sharpened it again. Right. Okay. Had you sharpened it, it would have stayed sharp. Mm -hmm. The problem with here is they became dull. That is a, 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 what, what I like to call as one of the most dangerous things that could happen for any Christian. Any Christian. Don't you dare to tell yourself you're about it. Every Christian will have to counter this thing. How are you going to stay sharp? Your sharpness is not because you attended church. Your sharpness is not because you heard a few prophecies. Your sharpness is not because you worship God. It is not. The, the, when you are ha having a conversation, let me tell you this. Like, okay, uh, uh, Pam uh, works in, in a software world. Uh, her expertise is writing reports. When you look at the front end, you would say, I want how much money that have been collected from the day one and uh, the, the, the 30th of this month, how much did I collect? Then they just pack in those numbers and they see it, they got it. They got the information. <clears throat> Most of the people just see that picture. But for that to come here, there is a lot more layers behind it. And everybody is talking the same thing. You know, they talk, the, the same person that is seeing the report is the same person that is giving the information. But what Pam on the other end hears is different from what this person is telling. Because her hearing or her understanding is different. Her understanding was in the background, back end. So because she is in that depth, she is able to capture that information. And the next thing what she can do is she can convert that information and make it look like how you want it. All the web pages that we go to, like the, whatever apps that we use or whatnot, everything what you're seeing is the front layer. Usually, like I said, most of everybody has an understanding of the front page. <clears throat> Nobody that is using Facebook is complaining that the guy who is coding for Facebook makes 150 grand minimum. Why is he getting 150 grand? Because his understanding of these layers. The deeper they go into those layers of understanding, they will be called mature or seniors. All right. The seniority in that world doesn't have anything to do with age. Mm -hmm. There are some of these people don't even know how to tie their shoes. That program you have Facebook that you're using. So what is maturity? The Bible it tries to quantify it for us in here. See, you know, I, I wanted to give this to you. I want to give this information to you. I want to say and clarify these things to you. But you don't have the hearing. And this is another thing that you and me need to understand. Saying is not that important. If there is no, not going to be understanding. It is never important for you to say whatever is on your mind. It is so, everybody is so, you like, oh, I'm going to tell you my, my two cents. Let me tell you something, nobody cares. If nobody told you that, let me tell you that. Let me help you. Right? Can I help you? <laughs> nobody cares. Because when you are not bringing understanding to it, you can tell them what all you want. If their understanding is not in that level, they will not grasp it. 
She could be, you know, uh, someone like Pam or someone that programs in the end, uh, back end, they'll be talking certain things because their understanding is at that level. As soon as the information comes, they pass the information at the level they heard. Not at the level that was spoken. <coughs> that, 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 that is very important here. The, what God is speaking to you, he wants you to be able to grasp it on this end of the spectrum while you are still stuck in this end of the spectrum. That's why he is not able to extend you because... You're not able to grasp that side. Enlarge my territory. Mm. What is enlarging your territory? It's always, we always look at it from a materialistic things. Remember this thing. As a man thinketh, so is he. You are never going to be enlarged in your territory unless you enlarge in your hearing. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you don't grow in your hearing, or simply to put hearing equals understanding, grasping, comprehension. That is what tells how much of a maturity you have. How much can you comprehend? How much can you understand? The same layer of information can be coming to you. Which level are you able to interpret that? That is what explains to you how mature you are. The measuring stick. It talks about for though by this time, 12th verse, by this time, he, he measures it even against time. If you sit at something for a certain time, you should be an expert at it. The problem is we look at it, we keep looking at it, we keep looking at it, but we are never experts. By, uh, for, though by this time you ought to be teachers. Amen. You needed someone to teach you, again, the first principles of the oracles of God. Again, I need to teach you the basics. This is where most of the church is these days. We mm. have come to the place where we want to be taught basics. Mm -hmm. We just want that spoon feeding. God loves you. God loves you. I mean, yeah, God loves you is a very powerful message. I get it. Mm -hmm. But what does God loves you mean? You can hear in different depths of it. Remember, the Bible says that you know the length, the breadth, and the depth of love. There is so much that you need to dig through in that love. God loves you should mean much more than, okay, God gives me a warm and fuzzy feeling. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, most of the Christians are at that place. Oh, God loves me means he gives me a warm and fuzzy feeling. That is not God's love problem, it is your hearing problem. Yeah. If you can go into the lengths and the depths and the breadth or, or the height of the love, if you can decipher those things as you keep going, you will be able to see how far you can stretch. Yeah. How much more you can see the hidden treasures of secret places. If it is public knowledge, it is not secret, isn't it? True. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 And, and, and you have come to need milk and not solid food. You have come. You have come. That's a great fall. <clears throat> That's a great fall. Many, team, yeah. many people proclaim, I knew God from my childhood. That doesn't mean a thing. How much did you grow in Him? Yeah. How much can you comprehend him? How much can you understand the expression? It's not the word. The word means expression. How much can you understand the expression? If you don't understand the expression behind the word, the word becomes law. 
That's where most of the people, the people struggle. We, could, we are not going beyond that where we can understand the expression of the word. How far that expression goes. You know very well your no words have expressions, right? You express. You know, that's one of the reasons I hate words. I, I hate text. It doesn't carry my expression. It only carries my words. True. Yeah, well, except for emotions. Yeah, I, I, those, are the mo those are the most garbage things that are out there. But anyway. <laughs> I confused my wife recently with an emoji. Right now she says, I can never see this emoji like the same way. Because I, 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 I gave a, a, an emoji a totally different meaning for her. But she learns that. She knows that that is my expression. Anytime I send her that emoji, she knows exactly what I mean by that. <laughs> uh. and she was complaining the other day, you ru ruined this emoji for me. <laughs> Maybe I bettered it. Who knows? Mm -hmm. I improved it. <laughs> but that, 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 the, the, the expression is what we need to find. Uh, but solid food, 14th verse, the solid food belongs to those who are full of age. Can somebody say full of age? Yes. Full of age. The, that, that, that is what we are talking about. We need to understand how to age in the Lord. Amen. That doesn't have anything to do with your years. Remember, in God, one day equals thousand years. Are you with me? Yeah. That means you will be able to comprehend an information or an understanding of God that is worth thousand years. Okay. Let's use those dynamics even for that. Who are of full age, that is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Without understanding, there is no discernment. Yeah. Your discernment is directly proportional to your understanding, to your hearing. Which layer? Which layers, when God is giving us pockets of information. That's why I like quantum physics so much. It's a pocket. Pocket of information that comes to you. You can decipher it at different levels, different levels. Where are you? Which layer are you deciphering? That's the question you and me need to ask. That's why I stopped asking God to speak to me. Long back when, I stopped asking God to speak to me, God. You know what I started praying? I asked God, give me crystal clear hearing. Speaking is his job, hearing is my job. Okay. I don't want to do his job. He is faithful, he will do his job. As a matter of fact, he never shut, shut off. It's a continual radio. It continually go. It continuously goes on. <coughs> but someone who can receive it will be able to receive it. That's why we say, "Oh wow, it's right there. I never saw this." It's because your hearing didn't grow that far. Mm -hmm. As we are growing in the Lord, that is what happens. Your hearing grows. The more of your hearing grows, you are becoming mature. Your maturity comes through your hearing Amen. of His Word. Okay. That's why we come again across the thing. Faith comes from? By hearing. By hearing. hearing. And hearing, hearing by the, by the word. word. Proverbs 16.31 says this thing. The silver-haired head is a crown of glory. The silver-haired head is a crown of glory. It's simply saying, old people are a crown of glory. <laughs> but, don't just get all excited about it. <laughs> if it is found in the way of righteousness. Amen. There is our cause. 
Just because you're old, you ain't good for me. Amen. Just because you've been in the church for the last 30 years, you're not that good for me. Unless you have matured in your hearing. Most of us hear God with our feelings. With our flesh, with our carnal senses. That is where we are still hearing God. We want Him to show up. We want Him to touch us. We want Him to fall on us. We want Him to do all the X, Y, Z's upon us. That's the only way we are identifying, okay, God is here. But can we go even deeper? So God is looking for someone who can go deeper. He's looking for somebody who can age. Your aging is coming through your hearing. Which layer of information can you grasp? Yes. 2 Timothy 4, chapter, starting at verse 1. 2 Timothy chapter 4, starting at verse 1. I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Amen. Yeah. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. Mm. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrines. They don't want sound doctrines. We just want the elementary stuff. Yeah. We just want to hear what is feeling, what we call these days as a feel-good gospel. Feel good mm -hmm. God is going to bless you. Yeah. God is going to bless you, woman. God is going to bless you, son. God is going to take care of God loves you so much. I'm not saying it is wrong. I'm saying let's move past it. I charge you, therefore, uh, I'm, I'm going back. <laughs> Long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they do not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears. Again, it's the hearing problem. What kind of a problem do you have? <laughs> if you have any problem, that's a hearing problem. That is most very important for us to understand. They, they will heap up for themselves teachers. They will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you be watchful in all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. Your job is not to fix other people's problems. Your job is to fix your own healing. Okay. Amen? Amen? Let's not worry about looking at other people's problems. Why is that? That is broken. Why is this? That is broken. Let's focus on us. Sometimes. You know, that, that, that visual, I always like it, right? When, when you're pointing finger at somebody. How many fingers are pointing at you? I always like that visual, even though it sounds elementary, but it's like at least a good reminder. Quit wasting my time pointing fingers at others. When somebody, if you start pointing fingers at me, let me tell you something, you will find thousand and one things. But I can also tell you that if I start pointing fingers at you, I can find thousand and one things yeah. in you too. But that's not our job. Let's focus on our hearing. Luke chapter 10, starting at verse 21. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and the prudent and revealed them to babes. This is beautiful. You don't need to be a scholar to be able to understand God's things. That's a beautiful, beautiful uh, qualification. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in your sight. 
All things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows who the Son is except the Father, and who the Father is except the Son, and the one to whom the Son wills to reveal him. And he turned to his disciples and said privately, Blessed are the eyes which see the things you see. Blessed are the eyes which see the things that you see. For I tell you, many prophets and kings have desired to see what you see and have not seen it. And to hear what you hear and have not heard it. Your blessing is directly connected to your hearing. Mm -hmm. How much of a hearing we have. Hebrews chapter 6, we are going back to the 6th chapter, it continues there. Therefore, Hebrews chapter 6 starting at verse 1, Therefore, leaving the discussion of elementary principles of Christ. He, he got, here, uh, the writer, or, 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 or Paul, is trying to ask us for a separation. Can you move on, please? We got to leave something and connect with something else, but we are still stuck many times. This is the biggest problem for Christian. He doesn't know how to say goodbye. We are still stuck with the same mindset, same ideology, same group. We don't know how to say, yes, I am done with you. We struggle with that so much. If you really want to grow, you will have to say no. Okay. You can never go to middle school if you don't say no to elementary school. Wow. How are you going to expect yourself to grow in the Lord if you can't say no, if you can't leave the elementary school? Just because you are leaving the elementary school doesn't mean you are saying whatever is in the elementary school is null and void. No, no, no. I am growing to the next level that has the foundation that has been laid. So let me go to the next layer. Amen. Leaving the discussion of elementary principles of Christ. Every time God asks for a separation, there are two things that are a must. Separation from and separation unto. If you don't for, do these things, it's easier for you to separate from something and if you don't for, figure out how to separate unto something, yeah. you will become worse than where you have separated from. It is not about just getting away from something, it's also about getting to something. Where are we going to is more important than what are we leaving. In many cases. All right, now say, leave those principles. Let us go on to perfection. What it is, what it means, the translation for it is maturity. To the maturity. If you want to go for the maturity, like, like what is he saying? Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works. I shouldn't be even talking about adultery with y'all. It's elementary stuff. <laughs> it's an elementary stuff because you have been living with that for a while. So we have to move away from that. Or we shouldn't even be talking about uh, 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 the other dead works. That we have been involved in our lives. Those are elementary stuff that God is trying to pull us away from. So he can go into, take us into something else. Repentance from dead works and of the faith toward God. Of the doctrine of baptisms. Of laying on of hands. Of resurrection of, judge, of the dead. And of eternal judgment. These are elementary y'all. These things are elementary stuff. If you are still confused in these things, let me tell you something. You haven't graduated from elementary. Hmm. Okay. okay. You haven't. So if, you, 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 if we can answer these things, we haven't graduated from these things, so we can, we can fully uh, 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 graduate to a place where we belong. 
and of eternal judgment. And this we will do, this we will do if God permits. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened. This is the, this is the thing. For, for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come. If they fall away to renew them again to repentance, since they crucify again for themselves the Son of God and put him to an open shame. It is impossible when you once you have enlightened yourself with something. It is impossible. Even, you know, there is no such thing. I always say this thing. There is no such thing as better than the best. Once you got the best, and if you've fallen from the best, there is no way climbing back. You're done. That's what he gives. If they fall away to renew them again to repentance. Since they crucify again for themselves the Son of God and put him to an open shame. For the, uh, uh, for the earth, earth which drinks in rain that often comes upon it and bears herbs useful for those uh, by whom it is cultivated receives blessings from God. But if it bears thorns and briars, it is rejected and near to being cursed whose end is to be burned. It still is connected with our healing. It still is connected with our healing. So he goes for the earth which uh, he goes on. Uh, but beloved we are confident of better things. Can somebody say confident? confident. We are confident of what? Better things. This is not a, 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 a wish to have better things. It is a confidence. God is talking about us having confidence for better things. Whether it is physical or, 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 or mental or spiritual or financial, whatever it may be, there is always a better thing. Okay. There is always a better thing that we can go after concerning you. Yes. Things that accompany salvation. When you get salvation along with salvation, you will have X, Y, Z come with you. The better things also have to come with salvation. When you are saved, you are also promoted to better things. Amen. Are you with me here? Amen. So when you have salvation, you are living in your salvation when you are able to live in the better things that God has proposed for us. That is the fruit of your salvation. Though we speak in this manner, for God is not unjust to forget your work and labor of love which you have shown toward his name. In that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that each one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end. What does hope require? Diligence. Faith. Your diligence. It won't just happen. You got to maintain it. You got to shoulder it. You have to carry it. I had hope yesterday. Yeah, you need to have today too. And we desire that each one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end. That you do not become sluggish. But imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. It requires both faith and patience. It requires both of those things. Faith and patience. For, uh, 13th verse, for when God made a promise to Abraham, 
because he could swear by no one greater he swore by himself sure saying surely blessing i will bless you multiplying i will multiply you how many of you call yourself uh, 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 call abraham as your father Me. do you call yourself mm -hmm. is abraham your father yes He's the father of faith, isn't it? Yes. If you are walking by faith, he is the father of it. Amen. So if he is the father of it, what God told him was, blessing, I will bless you. Multiplying, I will multiply you. So do not worry about being blessed, nor you have to be worried about being multiplied. And so after he patiently endured, he obtained the promise, for men indeed swear by the greater and an oath of confirmation is for them an end of all dispute. Thus God determining to show more abundantly to the heirs of promise the immutable immutability of his counsel. Immutability of his counsel. Confirmed by, confirmed it by an oath, that by two immutable things in which it is impossible, that's the step one, it is impossible for God to lie. Count on that. Mm -hmm. Count on that. Mm -hmm. That it is impossible for God to lie. Can we repeat that? It is impossible for God to lie. Come on, let's mean it. It is impossible for God to lie. He cannot lie. He doesn't know. He doesn't have the capacity to lie. Because lie came out of sin. He doesn't know sin. So he doesn't have the capacity to lie. If he said, I will care for you, what does that mean? I will, I will care, care for you. you. That is an immutable thing that God has given to us. Then we might have strong Consolation. That is the second one. Who have fled for refuge to lay hold of the hope set before us. Now my question to you is, is hope your refuge? Or is sadness your refuge? Is your struggle your refuge? Many times we take comfort in our struggle. We got to live in that struggle. We got to live in that chaos. We got to live in that, that, that thing that we always feel. Many times we run to money as our refuge. But the Lord is giving us the best way, the best way. We have fled for refuge to lay hold of the hope before us. This hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which enters the present behind the veil. Where the forerunner has entered for us, even Jesus, having become high priest, the important thing here is forever. Forever. How long he is going to be a high priest? Forever. forever. That means you can, you can count on him forever? Yes. yes. Forever. You can count on him now. Because he is still the high priest there. Sitting there. He went in front of us. He is our forerunner. He is on the other side of the way. He is like come boldly to the throne room of grace. Because I am sitting on the other side. I got this match fixed for y'all. Just come. Amen. Where the forerunner has entered for us, even Jesus, having become high priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. So hope should be our refuge. The biblical hope, not the hope the Hollywood tries to sell us. That hope is what God is. Amen. It's got nothing, no power. Amen. But whereas here it talks about immutability. Immutability, man. Think about that. Nothing can destroy it. 
Nothing can alter it. That's why Jesus says at one place, heaven and earth may pass away, but my words will never. My words will never. I'm going to read a few statements for you. Now we have an opportunity to see the unseen. Are you still closing your eyes and ears? That is the question. You know, there was a time I had a vision from the Lord. In this vision, I was walking in the, in the darkness. It was, it was so dark and thick and bushes and all rocks and all those kinds of things. It's nothing smooth about it. It's all dark. Somewhere, all the way, somewhere far away, I see a spot of light. A small, small spot of light. So I'm looking at that light and I'm going through these things, stumbling and falling, and, but I, my eye was all over it. And I kept going and kept going and kept going there. And there I see a guy. Like, there is a light like this about him. I can, it's kind of like a, gave me a, a visual, like a, a, a street light. So this guy was under it, right under the light. And I'm seeing this guy from a, from a distance, from the darkness. I'm seeing this guy. And this guy, when he was in that light, he was also stumbling. He was also falling. He was also tripping. When I saw this thing, I was like, what is the point of me going there? And I went back. And I woke up from my vision. And then the Lord tells me, that is exactly what we are doing as Christians. We are in the light with our eyes closed. Mm. That's why there is no difference between you and the one that is in the darkness. Mm. It's time that we open our eyes. That we open our eyes. Ears. It's not about God not speaking. It's not about God not showing. He is doing that every day. He is faithful. That's what he says. He's not going to change. But for you to comply with him with your healing. You know God is trying to show so many layers of information that is happening. We are still stuck in an elementary layer. Some people are stuck in the middle school layer. Some, we, we have so many layers that we are stuck in when we can mature ourselves to a next layer, next level. My prayer today for all of us is that we will grow in our healing, in our understanding. That's why the Bible says again and again, in all you're getting, get understanding. You got to be able to hear. Understanding in my viewpoint is receiving. That's receiving. You know, if you ever want to imagine a football game, Jesus being the quarterback, the receiver. How far are you? Jesus can grow, throw. You know, he can throw a pitch. He can throw, I'm sorry, he can throw. But are we ready to receive? Are we still struggling here, fumbling here? Or are we ready? Hey, Jesus, I'm open here. I'm open, I'm open. He wants to take us to those levels. When you can't go in there in your thinking, He can take you physically there. You desire to be there physically, but you can't go there unless your thinking gets you there. As a man thinker, so so now the question uh, again, are we moving, uh, are we leaving the elementary talk and moving to the mature conversation? Are we doing that? That ought to be an exercise for us. That ought to be an exercise for us. Are we still struggling with the elementary stuff? I'm not saying you should just bypass this thing. God, the Lord knows when he grad uh, grades you, he knows very well you haven't graduated from elementary. 
Because you have done increase, you have not done increased your hearing. You know, like public school, it's not public school, y'all. Just to stamp you pass and move on to the next grade. God doesn't move you like that until you pass. You're done there. You, you're sitting there, dude. Even when you go to heaven, let me tell you something. You will be doing the same class again. <laughs> He's not going to give you a pass. You think heaven is going to wipe off all of your uh, lack of education? No. He's not going to leave you until you get it. If you don't get it, you're not moving. You're still on the outskirts. <laughs> His circle of influence doesn't work inside out. It works from outside in. And why, why I say this is this. Outer courts, inner court, holy of holies, right? Amen. That's how it works. He wants to draw you closer to him. His layers of information comes to you the closer you go to him. Amen. He's kind of like a flux. The, go, the closer you go, the stronger you feel the flux. The field, however you want to put it. But anyway, I don't want to get into my science now. All right. Elementary does not mean not necessary, but a requirement to get to the next level. You have to pass elementary for you to get into the middle school. You have to, right? The same thing here, if you don't get this, you can go to the next level. But what I'm, what he's trying to say is, don't get stuck in here because some of you don't even know you have been promoted all the way to high school. You're still trying to stick with the elementary school. Think about that part. It requires faith and patience to inherit the promises of God. It's not going to just fall into your lap. The promises of God. Even though they are A and Amen in Christ Jesus, we have to go to our promised land using our faith, our patience. Amen? Amen. You got something today? Yes. yes. Amen. Give God some glory. Give God some praise. God is good. God is doing greater things. I am praying that you would grow in the Lord, that you may be able to hear more depths of His knowledge. What he is trying to speak so you may prepare yourself. That is how you can enlarge your territory. Yeah. That is how you can enlarge your tents. Just because you buy a big tent doesn't mean anything. Unless it is filled with his life. Amen. With his understanding. Amen. Amen? Amen. Amen. So let's continue to believe that. Let's continue to pray for that. And I pray that we all will grow. In that understanding. May the Lord increase our hearing today. May the Lord increase. I pray that God will give all of us crystal clear yeah. hearing. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen? Let's end with our confession. Are you with me on this? Yes. yes. All right. Three, two, one. We are Covenant Fusion Church. We are a body of believers. We are blessed to be a blessing and we are filled for His glory. Amen. 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 God bless you. We love you. Amen.